Hey everyone, what do you get with a wireless mouse when you couple it with weeks of being idle? You get dead batteries. I'm going to show you how to fix that in just a minute. So I bought this mouse on eBay and the reason I bought the mouse was because it's wireless. I also like the small size. It's smaller than a typical uh, Microsoft style mouse or a Dell mouse or any of the uh, typical wired optical mouses. So it fits nicely in my briefcase. And one of the things that I liked about it was it has a USB dongle that stores right in the back of the mouse very handy. I like that. Um, the thing that I did not like was that this mouse tended, and like practically any wireless mouse that you will buy, either a Bluetooth mouse or, or a, a standard wireless mouse, is that it will eat up batteries. And the reason it eats up batteries is because the mouse is always on. They tell you that it has a, a standby feature that reduces the battery usage, but that doesn't turn it completely off. Anytime you accidentally hit one of the buttons, the mouse turns on again. So if you keep this in your briefcase, it's constantly turning on. And that's a problem. My interim solution to that problem, if I can figure it out, was to take one of the two batteries that's inside, this one takes two AAAs, and turn it backwards upon itself so that they both faced in the same direction and the polarities opposed to each other and the net voltage is zero. So every time you want to turn the mouse on you have to pop the cover off, take the battery out, put it in the right way and put the cover back on. That is a pain in the neck. What's the solution? The solution is to create an on-off switch sometimes easier said than done. But I did find a solution. I figured, well, let's see. When I press this button, the mouse pop, uh, the dongle pops out. The dongle pops out because there's a spring-loaded mechanism inside. Maybe I can use that spring-loaded mechanism to turn it into a switch. Let's find out. So the first thing you do Take the batteries out. You'll find two screws, one underneath, one underneath each battery, and then one underneath the front of the mouse towards the tip here. So there's three screws that hold this case together. Now I confess, I have already modified this mouse. Uh, I didn't buy more than one. So when you take when I take it apart, you're going to see the modifications that I've already made. And there you can see the modifications that I've made. All right, these wires didn't exist when I bought the mouse. Bringing you in a little closer, you can see what I've done to create the switch. So this is the spring-loaded mechanism that pushes the dongle out when you insert it. This is a piece of copper foil tape, adhesive-backed copper foil tape that I've soldered a wire to. And I've also soldered a wire to the other half or the uh, to the back side of the return spring for the USB dongle. Hence, I've created a normally open switch that right now is in the closed position because I've removed the USB dongle. When I insert the dongle, you can see how it operates the spring and pushes it off of the copper foil opening the circuit. So anytime the USB dongle is inserted into the mouse, the mouse is off. Anytime the USB dongle is out, the mouse is on. I did have to remove this spring and bend it so that I made sure that the edge of the spring rubbed fairly hard 
against the top surface of the mouse and hence against the copper foil so that uh, it makes a good solid contact when it, when it swings across to this position right here. The two wires are soldered to the printed circuit board on the top. One goes directly to the battery contact spring right here on the top and the other goes to another location where, the bat where this spring is connected underneath. The one modification that you need to make to the printed circuit board is to slit the foil trace right here with a razor knife. So my, my one wire is connected here to the spring and the other wire is connected right here to this capacitor. When the switch is closed it makes the circuit that I broke by cutting this foil trace and I have a normally open switch. So we'll put the uh, PC board back into the bottom tray. Now this is right here this is the optical sensor unit for the mouse. All right, you see it in the window on the bottom. The gap between the top of the optical sensor and the bottom of the opening for the USB dongle is very, very small. Not even these thin wires will fit in between. So when I reassemble the mouse, I need to be very careful about how I tuck these wires in. I've already cut these wires and trimmed them to length. I had to do that a couple of times to get them to the right length before I could actually get this thing together. And I see I do have to, I don't know if you can see, you can see how the wires are looped inside. If I just assemble this the way it is, these wires are going to lay down on top of the optical sensor and they'll prevent me from assembling the case all the way. So I kind of have to tuck them in as I assemble the case to make sure that they line up in the right location and miss the optical sensor. So now I've got my, my shell together. All I need to do is put my screws back in, reinsert the batteries, attach the cover, and you see immediately it turns on. Why? Because the dongle is out. And there's the LED. All right. The moment I insert the dongle, the mouse is off, and the batteries last. It's a beautiful thing. Hope you've all enjoyed this little tip. As always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And peace, everyone.